Hello and good morning. I've just come in from work. How was your morning? How was your afternoon? How is your afternoon? It's 2.45. And uh, for you who do not know, my name is Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. Well, I had a wonderful morning. I loved and worked and loved and worked and prayed, got tempted, prayed some more, and the Holy Spirit kept me the whole time, just, ah, I thank God for that. Some folks aren't the most loving. There's my mailman. God bless him. And um, some people aren't the most loving. There's a lot of things behind, uh, you know, behind our faces especially if you are not able to do the things you want to do and you're disabled. Sometimes there's some fear and some bitterness and some anger and some resentment. And, but uh, just keep on loving. Keep on loving. I had a special day yesterday. It was the Sabbath. Went to church. Got, got a knockdown punch, came back. <laughs> Oy. <laughs> but I had a good sermon in between the, the rustlings of the mind. I had a good sermon about, um, best is talking about how far will you go, you know. David had, uh, he fought the lion, he fought a bear, you know, he was a fight somebody, a warrior, a king. But before I continue to talk, I'm going to pray because it's safe to do so. Come on, y'all, let's pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for a wonderful morning. Thank you for using us as you have. Lord, you woke us this morning in our right minds. We were able to clothe ourselves and to, Father God, to start our day. Thank you for hearing our prayer this morning and especially for the times, Lord Jesus, that you did special visitation. You know that special visitation when you refresh us. Because sometimes we pray and well, we don't always need, you know, that refreshing, that well of water that springs up. But Lord, sometimes, hallelujah, hallelujah, it just comes and restores, rejuvenates, Lord, it's, um, what is it? It's because you are nigh them of a broken heart and contrite spirit. Thank you for being real. Now bless us through the afternoon. Continue to use us. Open our ears that we might hear the word. Lord, the day is not over, so give us strength to do what we need to do. Open your these ears of ours so we hear the word and apply it. In Jesus' name, amen. Honey, heard the word. It was it was good word. It's good word. I love my pastor. I love my pastor. I do. I'm sorry. I love my pastor. I love him. He's like an older 
little brother, you know, an older little brother, because he's, I think he's 50, and uh, most of his congregants, I would say they're over 60, maybe over 50, you know. There's a lot of young ones in there, but that's our older little brother. And we are praying for him and praying him through because we love our older little brother. And his name is Kevin LeBron Adams. And I got another older little brother. His name is Mark Brandon. Mm -hmm. He's an older little brother. And we're praying him through as well, him and his wife Laura, as well as Lady Cynthia Adams. We've got to pray for him because the enemy would attack them horrifically because they are you know, they, they're being used. And uh, if you love somebody, love endureth all things and hope with all things. And <sighs> love, it covers a multitude of faults. So if you got a pastor like uh, ours that you love, hang in there. Pray for him, pray for his wife. Pray for his children. What's he praying for us? Anyway, Pastor told us yesterday, he read the scriptures, and I'm not going to look into the scriptures and tell you where it is. But did you know that Goliath has a bro had a brother? Did you know that, that I think one of them mentioned something about he has six fingers and six toes? <laughs> he was out. He was a humongous sibling. Also, he had uh, four boys, and they were just like their daddy, big. And uh, it's no wonder, you know. You now they talk about David slowing, slewing, David slew Goliath with five smooth stones. It's written about in the Bible. And, um, dang. We wonder why he picked five up. Not because he was going to miss with the first try. You know, the Lord led him to pick up five of them bad boys. Because he knew that he was going to need them. That giant had four sons and a, and a brother. So if you ever knew somebody like that, you got to fight them and then you got to fight that thing. Children and the relatives? Jeez. Well, that's the way it is. But guess what Pastor said? Pastor told us that this thing is unique. And sometimes the enemy keeps coming back. He not only comes in one uh, people form, he'll come in sp uh, spirit form, using people and using things, elements, anything to... Uh, to catch you off guard and to have you relax, and, you know, in between your battles. Because we are always fighting, honey. If we ain't fighting one thing, we're fighting another. Mm -hmm. Battles within and outside of us. Hallelujah. I know if you're like me, after a battle, you want to go somewhere and put your feet up. Mm -hmm. You want to rest. You want to take it easy. Well, the enemy's trying to wear out the saints. But he can't do it because where we get our restoration from, that well of living water that springs up in us unto everlasting life, you know, that rejuvenating liquid, that fountain. What did that song say? There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. 
And sinners plunge beneath the flood. Lose all their guilty state. Hallelujah. Jesus. Well, this morning, I, I prayed last night when I came home from church. But I prayed this morning. And I told him about stuff. And he came in. You know, just rejuvenated, restored, re just, just, you know, you're made over again. It's an awesome feeling. It's refreshing, and I thank God for His Holy Spirit. God is real, y'all. He is real. Okay. And um, we are still in the book called God Calling, written by Sarah Young. And Sarah has an entry for the 12th of August. By the way, my name is Mother Gal Trailer. It is August 12th. It is the year 2019. It is 2.56. I just got off of work. You, some of you will probably work a little later than I do, but I go in a little earlier than you do. And or vice versa. But um, today is the day the Lord hath made. He told us to rejoice and be glad in it. And that's exactly what I intend to do all day long. And I'm using some of what she says. A lot of stuff I forgot. But I'm using, you know, she says. Pray before you speak to me. Pray. When you hear people address you, pray and ask God, what should I say? He'll always come out on top. He answers prayer. Oh, God. All right, August 12th. In her 365-day devotional, she was inspired to write the following words. Come to me when you are weak and weary. Now, this is the Lord talking to Sarah Young. Come to me when you are weak and weary. Rest snugly in my everlasting arms. I do not despise your weakness, my child. Actually, it draws me closer to you because weakness stirs up my compassion. Mm -hmm. My yearning to help. Accept yourself in your weariness, knowing that I understand how difficult your journey has been. Mm. Do not compare yourself with others who seem to skip along their life paths with ease. Their journeys have been different from yours, and I have gifted them with abundant energy. I have gifted you with fragility, providing opportunities for your spirit to blossom in my presence. I'll read that again. I have gifted you with fragility, providing opportunities for your spirit, oh, for your spirit, excuse me, to blossom in my presence. Accept this gift as a sacred treasure, delicate yet glowing with brilliant light. Rather than struggling to disguise or deny your weakness, allow me to bless you richly through it. Hallelujah. Wow. Do you ever get weary? You get weak and weary? You get tired? Sometimes I get tired. Do you ever get tired of fighting the same old enemy again and again? <laughs> Yeah, I know you do. Pastor was saying that um, you ever fight somebody in school and it's a person standing around waiting for you to fight him again the next day? Sometimes how the enemy is. Hallelujah. Or he'll just come back as, a, in the spiritual realm, he'll come back as a different person. Uh, but you won the bat battle before. And you'll win it again. You'll never get rid of the enemy. Not until the Lord uh, says so. You know. This fight is on. And the 
it's a lifelong thing. But one day, it's going to be swallowed up in victory. Mm -hmm. I think as long as I live, I will have a fight. I fought to get here. You know, that sperm fought to get to the ovum. And I, there was a lot of sperm in front of me and behind me. And that spermatozoa fought. And guess what? I was in one of them, and I got there before the rest of them. And the Lord said, yeah, let's let her be born since she's fighting so hard to get here. So, hey, thank you, Jesus. I'm here. I ain't put my dudes down yet. I learned how to fight. Hallelujah. And there's battles within us, and there's battles outside of us. Hallelujah. Don't be surprised at who the enemy is using these days. Okay? Okay. Don't be shocked. Just don't let him use you. My mother used to tell me, Gail, I say what, Mom? She said, don't let the enemy use you. It used to get me so pissed. It did. And you know what? She was so right. Hallelujah. She was so right. The scripture text. We're going to uh, relate to this. Uh, Sister Sarah relates to this. Is Isaiah 42 and 3. It reads, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. Hallelujah. We're the bruised reeds, you know. We get bruised in, in our, during the day. Get a punch here and a punch there. You know, you don't get physical punches, some of us. We don't work in, you know, in that in heavy weight you know, capacity in the ring or anything. But sometimes on your job, a cruel remark. Or, or you hear something. Or somebody will um, uh, do something. It's, it's a, it's... And, and that same person, um, you wasn't expecting, expecting it from them, but that same person will come and, uh, you know, uh, need something later. Or maybe you have done something nice for that person and you still, you'll still, st uh, that person, when the enemy will use him or her, um, it might be, pre you know, projected towards you and it's not actually it's not them that's doing it it's the enemy the enemy he wants to catch you off guard so that you will either uh, do something out of Christ's character or say something out of Christ's character he wants to uh, to hit you with a blow and I must say on yesterday, I was hit with a blow. Hallelujah. But I've been hit before. I learned how to take them blows and who to take them blows to. But honey, I could barely, I could just barely make it home. To tell you the truth, I could. Oh, my mom was racing and I was a little angry and but honey got on my knees and told the Lord about it, slept. Lord allowed me to sleep. And I woke up this morning talking about restoration. He's nigh them because my heart still ached. And I was thinking not with the mind of Christ. I had my mind, this old fleshly mind. This is not the answer to any question. This here, right here with this here? Nope. You must go to Christ. You must see what the Lord, you know, Lord, give me the mind of Christ. Give it to me because right now I don't have it. I got one of them um, South Bronx minds. You know, you know what a South Bronx mind is? Okay. A lot of folks in the South Bronx, y'all know what the South Bronx mind is. Project mentality. And I refuse to let anything or anyone 
uh, push me back into that mode of thinking. Okay? I am a ch I'm royalty. I've got class, charisma. I'm new, brand new. What can I tell you? He made me in his image to bring him glory. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, as I was saying, uh, as the word was saying to me, we're not to compare ourselves to anybody else, okay? Hey, I'm me and you're you. God bless you. I'm me, you're you. You be you. And you do you. <laughs> Don't expect me to be like you. Please. Because I'll surprise you. And, and don't despise being weak, she says there. The Lord told her, don't despise being weak. Sometimes I don't like I don't like being weak. I like to be strong. Strong. I like to just tell what you say to 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 let the world see you didn't knock me down. But honey, sometimes I get a punch to the gut. Knocks the wind out of me, Mike. Knocks the wind out of me. Not the first time. Not the first Goliath. Nah. Gotta go back. Long ways, way back. Been fighting a long time. And uh, I'm not tired yet. Not tired of asking God for strength. Not tired of giving Him the praise and the glory. Not tired of running. Just not tired. Because He renews our strength. We get weary, we get weak, and and, and and the Lord told Sarah, Don't don't despise and feel bad that you're weak. Because um it's that weakness, that that uh, you know, when you get weary and weak, that's what God He's nigh you. He you wanna get a prayer through? Pray when you have had a blow or uh, some discouragement or some, some heartache. Pray and see what happens to you. See who steps in your boat. Mm -hmm. Pray. Go to him broken hearted and sad and contrite. If, if there is any other time that you would think that um, he's not with you, that's the time to go when you're broken heart and he uses that frail part of you to get closer to you I mean last week talking about aches and pains oh my gosh why I don't know anyway anything that could ache was aching when one thing wasn't aching the other thing was aching uh, uh, my knee ached my hip ached my back ached my neck ached <laughs> The week before, my hands ache, and I need my hands. You know, just aching, aching. Everything just aching. And uh, golly gee, it was it was. That's disheartening. That's that that wear you down. And then to have somebody come by and kick you in the shins. <sighs> oh, but you know what it says here. The Lord told Sarah. He said, I know about your journey and how difficult it is. God knows it was a journey last week. That was a journey. Whew. That was a journey. Don't try to disguise your weaknesses. Don't disguise them. Or deny that you're weak and frail. People ask me Sunday, how you doing? How you doing, Gail? I said, I'm feeling my age. And I was. Talking about a sacrifice of praise. Yes, that was a sacrifice. Rather than struggle to disguise or deny your weakness, allow me to bless you richly through it. 
through the weaknesses, through the weakness of, of your physical weakness, through your emotional weaknesses, through your heartache, through your pain. Sometimes, you know, ibuprofen will not fix everything, baby. Neither will Advil. It just won't do it. Isaiah 54 and 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I wrote a little thing on, on Facebook. Love and pain go together. That's how he is able to be compassionate toward us. Because he knows, right? That the mountains and the hills are shaking right now. and But still unfailing love. God's love. God's love. Ask me yesterday, did I love uh, everybody? The answer would have been no. <laughs> no. But I was able to have such a sweet and loving husband. He didn't ask much of me yesterday. And he allowed me to rest. I made him a little tiny little something, something. So made him some spare ribs. I just couldn't do the rest of the meal. I cooked him up some spare ribs. And he took care of the rest of the meal. And he packed it away in his lunch and went on to work. And he kissed me before he went to work. And I thank God for his compassion. He even went to evening church without me. And I praise God for that. You know, have sympathy. Because sometimes, sister girl, it's weary, 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 weary. hate that word, but I got to say it. Um, Isaiah 54 and 10. In the same way the Spirit helps in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us and groans that words cannot express. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Some people don't believe in the Holy Spirit in speaking in tongues, but I do. I'm sorry, I do. And I ain't sorry about it. I'm thankful for because I will, uh, when, you know, when the unction comes to speak in an unknown language, like it did this morning, I, I just went, went with the flow, and, and see, there's, there's stuff inside here that only the Lord can, you know, I think he, like, the enemy does, doesn't get a chance to understand what you're saying when you speak in tongues. I know tongues. And uh, for those who don't speak in tongues, I don't know. God bless you. You know, get by the best you can. You know, you're still blessed and stuff. I don't know how you do it. Maybe you moan. But we, we you know, you can moan in the spirit. Just uh, as long as you get on your knees and let it go, let it go, let it go. Let God hear, speak English, whatever. Let him know that you're hurting. Let him know that you need restoration. Let him know that you need renewal, refreshing. Hallelujah. So come to me, the Lord tells Sarah. Come to me, says, I know about your journey. And he knows about my journey, and he knows about your journey. And I thank God that uh, there's such beautiful saints to walk with on this journey. But I just didn't know that Goliath has so many children. I know he had a brother. Oh, okay. I beat Goliath's uh, tailbone, and I have to beat his brother and his kids, too. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the family. Who knows? Maybe his mother's. She's on the way. I don't know. But I thank God for Jesus, because he restores my soul. My name is Mother Gail Trailer, and it is August. 12th and the year is 2019. It is 314 in the afternoon. And I still have quite a ways to go before the evening. In Jesus' name.
I'm still going to have that two pulled. I'm going to do it on Wednesday, so uh, y'all pray for my back. It's just the last one. Anyway, did that before too, so that will be no Goliath. Uh huh. Praise the Lord. I love you, Pastor Adams. He is a. Ah, he's something else. God bless you. Traveling mercies. And thank you for that ceremony yesterday. <laughs>